starting to come up. OK, there it is. Right. OK, let's pray. So, Father, we, we just want to, as we come before you, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being called your ambassadors. Lord, we thank you that we represent something that, um, that goes beyond our understanding. We represent someone who's wonderful and awesome. We represent the words of truth, the words there which are spirit and life. Father God, we thank you that we are ambassadors who are called to do this. And Lord, you have called each one of us. You have appointed this privilege and responsibility, Lord, for each one of us, God. And to that, we are grateful. And we pray that you would equip us, Lord, strengthen us, Lord, to carry it out, Lord, the way you want us to. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. OK, so ready to preach? OK. So um, so what we do is, uh, I, I, I'm just going to give a verse, OK? One scripture, and um, maybe a few seconds to prepare, or not, not even a few seconds. But you read that verse, and you're going to preach, OK? So we have, um, OK, last class we had a few people who spoke. Now we won't ask them. We won't trouble them again. So, um, see, from online, I'll just call out a few, uh, a couple of names, and then from in person, a couple of names. So we just have about five minutes, right, to do this. Okay, so we need to do it quickly. So, okay, so um, from the in person class, I'll ask Caleb, not Caleb, uh, Nelson, Nelson. Okay, so Nelson, um, you can take the mic. Take the mic and uh, your scripture reference is John three sixteen. Okay, that's easy. John three sixteen. So you take one minute, exactly one minute, to preach on it. Okay. So that's it. Just one minute. John three sixteen. Now that's it. You read it. Read it. That's your time to prepare. <laughs> okay. So you read through it. Uh, read for us. You open the Bible, John three sixteen. You read for us, okay, and that's your preparation time, okay. And then you preach. That's it, okay. Um, yeah, go ahead, read it. Read it for us. That's your preparation. Um, John three sixteen. Yes. Um, can everyone hear? Uh, online students, also. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go. For God so loved the world that mm -hmm. He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. OK, so you have one minute. Go for it. Yeah, Your time started already. OK. Yeah. So the eternal life mentioned is here is Jesus Christ. There is no other life than, than Jesus Christ. If there is, that is hell. So there is eternal, but there is no that uh, peace like heaven. It is quite very, uh, dan very dangerous place where we uh, we are not happy with that. And this is about the love of God, the agape, the agape love of God for the world. World means we are humans whom he created in his own image. Once who just uh, disobeyed God, still the love of God remained for us. And the way he loved was he gave his son for us. So this is what I... OK, done. Thank you. OK, that was within a minute. Thank you. OK. Um, from this side, OK, Vimal, you'd like to try? OK. So Vimal, um, this is your verse. Um, First Peter, chapter 1, verse 23. Okay. First Peter, chapter 1, verse 23. What happened? OK, OK. So you read it out. We need to do it quickly so we can. Um... Yeah. 
So you read it, use the mic, read it out loud, and then you um, speak, right? Okay. Uh, having been born again, hmm. not of corruptible seeds, but in uh, corruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Okay. Okay. Because Start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here is written, uh, we are born again, not by corruptible seeds, but in, uh, but incorruptible through the word of God, and uh, uh, which lives uh, in abides forever. So we are born again through the word of God. When we read the word of God, and uh, uh, we allow uh, allow the word of God to work in us, so. Uh, it, it cleans us. It uh, it shows us where we are wrong, what we are doing. Uh, we are we are doing sin and we are doing uh, bad things. So it helps us to uh, 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 show, it helps us to show what we are. And for, when we know uh, where we are, so we can repent and we can uh, ask for forgiveness. Okay. Okay. So so that was it one minute <laughs> okay okay so the um, okay just a hint best thing is to explain the text okay explain the terms in the text explain text meaning that verse explain what it is um, you know born again what is born again corruptible seed incorruptible seed what does it mean you read, read in the hindi also so you know and just explain the text text itself you know uh, we are born again by the word of god so so we're not evaluating okay not yet so that's fine this blessy you want to try oh last time blessy tried right wasabo okay okay maybe blessy then okay so um, for blessy okay what shall we give blessy any any choices um <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let me just uh, I only choose. Okay. So um Okay, let's do this. Okay. Uh, bless you again first Peter chapter two and verse nine. I think that's that's easy. First Peter chapter two verse nine. Okay, first Peter chapter two verse nine. Okay, so you read it out, and then after that, I'll start the time. Yeah, you read it out. First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. Yeah, go ahead. But you are the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a mm -hmm. holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, your time starts now. Go ahead. So yeah, uh, we can see uh, in the Old Testament also Isaiah, we can see that we are the chosen generation. Here we can see uh, we are the chosen generation. Even uh, we are sinned, uh, we, we may go to the many sins, but God has given us that uh, salvation. So we can go through the ministry or we are the chosen generation. We are mm -hmm. the priesthood, a holy nation. Because of Christ, we we, are, we became a holy nation. We are not at holy, but uh, Christ made us a holy and his own special people, not an ordinary people or not in any other people, but he made us his own special people. He made us special and uh, that you may, you may proclaim the praises of him who call you out of darkness. Yeah. Uh, because of the sins, uh, because of from the Old Testament, we became the sinful people, but he gave us that salvation. You know? Okay, that's one minute. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, who wants to try online? Um, anyone? I, I don't know uh, what kind of place you are. You can unmute and speak. Okay, Warren James. Okay, fine. So uh, let me just give you... So Warren James is going to speak now okay and Lu after that lucy okay so i'll i'll just ask um warren
hear this. Um, so, yeah, I think today we'll have two more, right? So, Warren and uh, Lucy, okay. So, um, so Warren, um, this is uh, the scripture for you. Okay. Um, John, sorry, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Okay, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. You can unmute and read it out. And once you do that, I will start the timer. Okay. Okay, Luke, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so here Jesus basically... Uh, gives us the supernatural power he gives us the power that he has telling us and empowering us to say that we he will give us the power to trample on serpents and scorpions uh, serpents and scorpions are depicted as uh, the evil and dangerous uh, 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 elements in the, in the world and so we have power over evil we have power over the dangerous elements in this world and this power is given to us by jesus uh, and over all the power of the enemy, yes. So basically, again, empowering us in general that we have power over enemy, the power of uh, power over Satan and and his uh, uh, and the darkness, uh, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So uh, when we uh, Jesus has given us the power, and we have to, so the more we align with Him, uh, He. Uh, he gives us all this power and he tells us that and he assures us that nothing shall uh, hurt us no, the enemy shall not hurt us okay okay i think that's uh, that's all we have time good thank you yeah then next is uh, lucy right okay so uh, so lucy um okay so here's it lucy for you it's romans chapter 8 and verse 16 okay romans 8 Verse 16. Romans 8, 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The okay. whole, the anointing what we have received from God, which is a comforter and guide in all our lives, it will bear witness that we belong to the kingdom of God, proclaiming and speaking boldly God's word in reaching out to the nations and drawing people to the world. When we, uh, It encourages us to teach, preach and demonstrate the works of God in our lives, setting an example and being a testimony to the people in and around us and to interact with the people. Holy Spirit is a guidance and comforter and it enforces the things what Jesus Christ did on the cross to be uh, to be carried on in our lives in reaching out to the people. That and it uh, ensures us that we we are the children of God, given a purpose and plan in our lives to carry on, as we are in His a master plan of the kingdom of God. Okay, okay. So, yeah, that was within one minute. Okay, thank you. So, hey, thanks to all of you who shared today. So, some things to keep in mind, okay? One is, um, you read the scripture, you read the text, and you remain true to the text. Okay, what does the text say? Sometimes what happens is we have a message in our heart about that particular topic or you know some word which is there, and uh, we want to share that. Okay, because maybe something that is in our heart. Okay, but um, in the context of the text, I'm just saying like for this particular exercise, in the context of the text that we are looking at, or the when we say text, I'm talking about the verse, right? The scripture portion or scripture verse. In the context of that scripture verse, okay. You take that and you share. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, who is it addressed to? If you, in case you have studied it before, uh, who is it? What is the context? What is the? Uh, who is it addressed to? What does it say really? You know, what does it? Does it say that you need to do this, or does it say? Is it a word of encouragement? Is it a word like, well, for example, this Romans eight and verse uh, verse uh, uh, sixteen? It's about uh, it's about bearing witness. You know, bearing witness to our spirit. And it's a it's a verse about identity. Like who does the bearing of witness? The Holy Spirit. Uh, he he bears witness to our spirit in our in in a man, right? And he is actually what is he bearing witness to? He's bearing witness to the fact that we are children of God. So so those are some things that to highlight, you know. And uh, so 
you remain true to the text okay so it's it's helpful if we i know it's it just put you on the spot so it's helpful to go in a logical manner and the uh, best thing is when you look at the scripture itself okay it is saying something in a logical manner when you say logical or you know in a sequential way you know it's saying something there's a flow of things okay this is what it says first this is what it says second this is what it says third right and it's pointing to somewhere so you can take people on a journey okay this is what it says this is what it is and this is what it means and and so you conclude with that okay so so this actually helps us right helps us to think helps us to present it um in a in a way that others are able to understand like when we start doing it first it's like okay i just want to get it right right you're not thinking about the audience at all you're thinking about yourself right you're thinking about oh, i better say it correctly i better say it i don't want to make any mistakes so you're thinking about yourself okay but the thing is when it comes to preaching you are we need to be conscious of the other person because you are actually sharing to the other person you know that is what we are you are communicating you are proclaiming about god but you are actually doing it to the others you know the other person who's listening so we need to be conscious about that we need to be conscious about you know the message from whom we are receiving the message and to whom we are giving the message right so these are things to be mindful of and we will overcome the what we think about ourselves we will overcome that right and uh, we need to actually you know think less and less and less in the sense you know how am i saying it and all that has to become second nature so you don't think about about yourself you know am i saying it right am i making a mistake uh, you know what what should i say next or i don't know what to say you know all that has to kind of come down diminished so you can just go ahead and you know say it in the best way possible you're also receiving information are they listening are they not listening and so you know you can communicate it in a very effective way okay okay so today we um, uh, we are looking at let me just share the notes okay, okay we are looking at the relevance of preaching right the relevance of um, preaching it you know and it's uh, it's something that we need to uh, think of the glory the chapter is titled the glory and the relevance of preaching okay so today if you look at our world our society typically in our times that we live in you know it's a very over communicated or uh, you know it's a, it's a place where there's a lot of saturation of information okay just information itself if you see you know how, how do you get information any information of anything how do you get yeah through media yeah so it is there at your fingertips right you don't need to necessarily buy a newspaper the very phone that you use as a communication device you know you have everything there facebook and instagram and whatsapp and and you look and people are constantly putting out information how do you put out information they put it on their whatsapp status they put it in their story they put it in the reels and we are getting notification if your notification is turned on okay this person has uploaded that person has uploaded so we are bombarded with lot of information right that's why we are an over communicated uh, society people we are saturated with information that's coming in from all places so in such a setting will preaching actually make sense right is it relevant for people will people actually listen right will people actually tune in okay, that's a big question right um so when we look at the word of god the word of god uh, you know when you go through scripture when we look at the book of acts it was through preaching yes those days there was we did not have this technology right we did not have all these ways of communication we did not have yes there was the written word yes people wrote and communicated but most of it was through preaching they one on one or one to many you know audience of you know gatherings of people it was through preaching right and the bible talks about this in again when we look at first peter chapter 2 um uh, let's go there um that verse that um we looked at just now um okay 
First Peter two. I'm sorry. Uh, it's the first Peter. Uh, where is that verse now? Okay, First Peter chapter one. Sorry, not uh, verse chapter two. First Peter chapter one, and if you look at verse um, uh, verse twenty three, right? It says, "Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible." Through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So he's talking about how does one be person become born again? How does a person receive salvation? Right? It's through the word of God. And he says the word of God is incorruptible. It's like an incorruptible seed. Right? It's a seed that is sown. Incorruptible means something that does not decay, something that does not become bad. Right? You piece of you put a piece of bread uh, on a in a plate and you keep it outside for a you know few days, it becomes all moldy. Right? It it becomes corruptible. It becomes decayed, but the word of God, because it's eternal, says it. It's not of this any earthly material. It does not become corruptible. It says incorruptible seed uh, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. It's eternal, forever and ever. You know, nothing's going to change that truth of God's word. Then uh, he says in verse twenty-five. Now this is the word by the gospel which was preached to you. Which was brought to you, which was communicated to you, this eternal word which lives for ever. Okay, so while the method and the modes might have changed, we know that this gospel needs to be preached. Now it could be th through social media, it could be through you know uh, other means, it could be through videos, it could be through podcast, or it could be through whatever you know MP3s. But this needs to be preached right this gospel needs to be preached so there is this relevance to preaching the word of god proclaiming the word of god communicating the word of god and today in you know in this day and time yes there is a you know there is a we need to be we need to make it relevant right we need to make it relevant not all the times do we have the luxury of being in a place and speaking to Maybe a group of people, right? And even right now, even as we are, I'm speaking to this group of people. There is this bigger group which is attending online, right? So all online students, you can wave your hands. <laughs> so we have this bigger group which is attending online, which is you know listening to this, and that's becoming a reality more and more, right? Um, yeah, Miriam, you have a question, or we're just waving your hand. Okay, so um, so we have this. That's becoming a reality. So, which means that we need to adapt and become skillful in taking this truth of God's word in all these different ways, right? So that which means that preaching, which is to proclaim, which is to ex exhort, which is to declare, uh, need not always be from a pulpit, right? Need not always be from a podium. We need to be aware of that. It can be really effective, even more effective. The reach can be even, you know, a far further um, when it's in different other ways. Okay, but we're not saying that preaching is outdated, but it's just that it reaches people in a different ways now, in different ways now. And so, if we don't adapt, uh, we will become obsolete. Obsolete meaning outdated. We cannot, we cannot reach the kind of people that we want to reach, right? Um, you know, typically, like one person was saying, you know, every time this person he he or uh, he drives uh, literally some forty-five minutes every morning to work, and as he drives forty-five minutes to work, he is listening to um, some some videos. He's listening to some messages, even as he drives in the car, right? He's listening. So, for this person. Preaching has to be made available in that way. You know, it could be uh, on a Spotify or it could be on a YouTube or whatever. You know, it needs to be made available in this manner, which means that one needs to preach uh, into into this kind of a media also. Okay, um, so while it is verbal, while it is proclaimed, we see that it is relevant. Okay, it is relevant according to 
scripture, the way it changes. Okay, we need to understand that. Okay, first thing that we can see is that well, God is a speaking God. Right? He spoke to the prophets. He spoke to the Son, and that's what we see in Hebrews. Right? Let's turn to Hebrews chapter one. Okay. Um, okay. So Hebrews one and. Um, Verse 1, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. Okay, Various times, various ways, what did he do? He spoke. So we have a God who communicates, who's speaking. Right? He spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets. Verse 2, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Through whom we, he has appointed, um, he has appointed heir of all things. Through whom also he made the worlds. Right, very clear that he's saying, okay, this is how he spoke, and this is how he's speaking through his son. So, what is God doing? He's communicating. He's speaking. Right, chapter two, verse one. It, it talks about. Um, you know, we must give more earnest heed, which means we need to be careful to the kind of the word that we have heard, the things that we have heard. Um, otherwise, we will drift away. Verse 4 says, God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Okay, So God is bearing witness with his presence, with his power, signs, wonders, according to his will. What is he bearing witness to? What is he attesting to? Verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which that the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? So those who heard him, those who heard that word which he spoke, which God spoke, they began to speak to others. They heard, they spoke. They heard, they shared. They heard, they preached. And so verse 4 says, God also confirming with his presence and power and gifts, right? These various things, which was spoken again, which was again communicated to others. Okay, so he speaks to us through the quickened word, quickened by the Holy Spirit, and God also confirms, right? And this is how God spoke to in the in the, spoke in the past, and this is how God speaks to us. And he has commissioned us. Second thing we see that he has commissioned us. Just like he has commissioned the prophets to preach, right, to proclaim. Right? So that is what we see in the Great Commission, right? He says that go therefore to all the world and you preach. Right? He has commissioned us. Right? And uh, we see in the book of Acts, right, several things. Um, they went, they preached, they went and proclaimed. Right? So we see that. This preaching of the gospel, this communicating, proclaiming of the truth of God's word, is his ordained, God ordained way of communicating the gospel, spreading the gospel. Okay. And um, several places, you know, we see this exhortation that, okay, preach. Paul says to Timothy, preach, be ready in season and out of season. And so on through church history, this is what they did. Right? Um, you know, in your revivals visitations class, you learn about uh, how the different people, you know, like people like George Whitfield, and how he traveled on horses on horseback miles together in order to go around preaching. Right? So it is unique. It is central to um, Christianity itself, the faith itself. And uh, and just that the way or the mode in which we preach has changed over the years. Okay, so we need to understand that yes, there is this important. Even though if it's a very um, you know over communicated, over informed society, there is this place of preaching. Right? It is important to preach. And now we need to understand, how can I preach to the people whom God has called me to preach? Okay, How can I preach, preach to uh, the people? You know, how else can I preach to the people? How else can I reach the gospel? 
yes, I, I'm going to preach, but how else can I do it? You know, and it need not always be a 45 minute message. It need not always be a one hour message, right? It can be a, it can be a two minutes thing. It can be a five minutes message, but you're preaching, you're proclaiming the truth. Okay. In ways that people can hear, listen, understand. Okay. So as a, as a proclaimer of truth, we need to be constantly thinking, how can I do this? How else can I do this? How else can I reach? Right. See, in Paul's days, he went to the synagogues. Why did he go to the synagogues first? That is where people were gathering. Right? That is where people were. Every Sabbath, they gathered. And he was reaching out to the Jewish community with the gospel. So he went there and he preached. Where else did he go? He first went to the synagogues. That's what we see. You know, he, wherever we went, he went to the synagogue. He saw that, okay, these people were gathering there. So he would go there. You know, and from the word of God, he would reason with them. Where else? Yes, we see that he would go to a, another gathering, and that is where people were indulging in business. Okay, so the business arena or the marketplace where people bought and sold and put their products and service on display, what we call as the marketplace, is another area. And Paul, wherever he went, like places like Corinth, and you know, we read about Ephesus and all these places. He engaged with people, Athens, engaged with people in the marketplace because that is where they were gathering and that is where a lot of communication was happening. So he engaged. And today's world, we see that there is a gathering which is happening in the digital space, online. There is a gathering, right? And it's a difficult gathering, right? It's difficult because people's attention span is very, very less. So we need to again think and see under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. How can I preach? How can I bring that mess, uh, the, the this message to these to this audience? Right. So, so that's that's another, that's a very challenging thing, right? But that is something that we need to think of. Okay, this is where people are gathering. They're gathering. They are listening. It's an online forum, or maybe they are personally they are they are scrolling through. They are watching this. How can I do that? How can I reach? Right? Okay. So this is something. It can be when we say proclaim the truth. It can be for people who do not know the truth. Proclamation is also for people who know the truth, right? Who are indifferent to it, right? It's, it's for a wake up call. Come on, wake up. You know this is it. This is what it is. This is the truth. Wake up. It can be also a a, a kind of an exhortation or encouragement to those who already know the truth, who are walking in the truth, right? We see Paul doing all that, right? And the apostles doing all that. They went to places where the gospel was not preached, right? They went to places where the gospel was preached already. They went to the churches where it was established just to encourage them, exhort them in the truth, encouraging them to continue in the truth. They also brought correction, and that was also to people who were already in the they brought correction. So today also when we are proclaiming, when we are saying we are proclaiming, this, we do all this. Right? We do all this to this audience, wherever it's not heard. Where, and our message and our method will vary. Right? The way we do it varies to different audience. Right? For example, you know, just one small example is in Athens, Paul saw that, well, there were a lot of idols, there were a lot of uh, altars, and there, there was even an altar to the unknown God. And so he he did not open up from Jewish scriptures and, and say, you know, how he would do in the synagogue. Right? He said, you know, I see that you are religious people. I see that you have a lot of altars. I see that you even have an altar to the unknown God. And therefore, you know, him you do not know, because you said already unknown. Him you do not know, I am explaining. No, this is what this is who he is, right? And he talked about that. So his method varied; it was different, right? Okay. Any any questions here? Anything that you want to add on? Yeah. Sabbath is referred to in the times that we live in. 
okay in times that we live in see the thing is uh, jewish sabbath is of course it's a typical saturday it's a saturday jewish sabbath is a saturday but in the times that we live in we see that the early church actually started gathering on the on the first day of the week for the yeah so the whole thing changed with them with that yeah. yes yeah so yeah that's how that's how the sabbath actually came into being yeah the, but when when we say the you know post the cross we see the whole thing changing in both the jewish yeah so yeah according to the the day of the resurrection of the lord and people started gathering around that um, very very radical departure from what they were used to especially for the jewish people gentiles of course it did not really matter to them but then yeah so they they all gathered on that day yeah. yeah they they will still continue to keep it like even the what do you call the uh, 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 messianic jews they will continue to yeah gather saturday yeah holy um but i think the the most important thing is you a day is what you allocate to the lord yeah set aside to the lord so because in in the um in the in the epistles it's very clear that you know you you choose a day because paul writes about you know one person values one day more than the other and so on but then you know as long as you decide you choose and you do that like sometimes it's it's not possible like if you're until recently if you're living in the gulf countries then friday was a day and sunday you would be it be a working day and so on that day the church would gather the church would meet right and uh, today on certain when it comes to certain working in some certain industries like the hotel industry uh, sunday is the busiest sunday is the uh, you know thing they so people gather on some other day and so things like that so so that's the thing yeah so it's a, i guess your question came in when you're talking about the gatherings right okay yeah any other questions or uh, thoughts you have okay okay so um so we'll move on to the next one topic which is about the the speaker the preacher the one who is the who is communicating it okay so like we were saying earlier i think it, we were looking at it in the local church class you know the the speaker the message and the media cannot be separated right the media becomes the message the way how a message goes out we were looking at that example of the handbill and a certain product like a, like a, maybe a bens or whatever would you do a newspaper insert no because that method of communicating itself a newspaper insert that becomes a message right so if you're putting a high end product as a newspaper insert that says that this is not a high end product this is not a you know a premium product okay so the message becomes a media no, sorry the media becomes a message so when you're talking about a preacher or the person who's actually carrying the message who's speaking the message that person and the message are one right you cannot separate the character of the person from the ability of the person right the person can be a great person can be a great orator very eloquent but if the character of the person is not in line with the message or the character is completely opposite preaching then then we see that the message is not effective it can be the most beautiful message it can be the most wonderfully explained message right but if the character is not in line if the character is not there or if there's something wrong with the character then the message does not become effective the message is not um, so that's why you know people say the the preacher is his proclamation or the speaker is the is his sermon right and that is why the lord jesus also said that um, this is in matthew chapter 5 right uh, let's um, go to that verse matthew 5 
Okay, Matthew 5, um, in verse 17 onwards, the Lord talks about, now don't think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets, I came to fulfill it, and so on. So he says in verse 19, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them. Okay, what is the order? Whoever does the word and teaches, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So the Lord is actually giving an order, order or progression. This is what you do. You know, you have a message, you do it first. You follow it first, right? Let it become part of your life first. So the Lord is saying, you know, he who does them and teaches them, right? He should be called great in the kingdom of God. So the man is the message. So how can I ask somebody to do something or follow something that I myself am not, I'm an, I'm not doing it. Right? That's a very, you know, that's the thing. Now, yes, the Bible also talks about the fact that we are works in progress, right? Oh, I think somebody has a question. Yeah, Gertrude, yeah, Pastor, please go. I have a question. Yeah. How can we know the character of the person who's delivering the message uh, through the message yeah so we cannot know we cannot know in, in its entirety right we cannot know the character of the person um the we, we we cannot know because we can we can know certain things from the speech we can know certain things from the attitude uh, like for example if the person is uh, saying something and is making is joking constantly about you know maybe maybe that person is a male and he's making jokes about you know about women and about uh, about marriage. You know jokes not in poor taste. You know uh, jokes yeah. in poor taste. Sorry, he's putting down constantly. You know then you you get to understand something about what that person thinks about women, what that person thinks about marriage, right? That he doesn't think too highly about all that. So so we get to learn something about the character when the person preaches, right? Okay. Or maybe thank they, you, Pastor. Yeah. So that way, yeah. But we can't know everything. Yes, the secret choices actually is the character. We can't know, right? But the if uh, the it it becomes authentic. It becomes a message of conviction. Only when we actually carry it out, and when it comes from a pure heart, right? So, for example, the the, the Lord Jesus. When he shared the word message, others were also saying this. You know, maybe same kind of message, but then. Yeah. They said when they heard him, they said they were first of all they were amazed, and the reason they why they heard him and they were amazed is that it said that it says scripture says that he spoke with authority. He spoke with authority and not as the others. So which means that there was a difference. Why? Because he was the living word, right? He, the word and the the person were one, right? He spoke with authority. So that is what you know we mean when we say okay the character and the message you know it needs to go together right okay thank you pastor okay yeah you have a question yeah yeah Okay, so the question is, okay, uh, well, what if the message has deep truth? What if the message, you know, actually is in line with scripture, but the messenger is not, right? The life of the messenger could be partially true and partially, um, yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, so what do we do in this? You know, the thing is that, um, like, when it comes to the, we can, we, we can do the same we can follow the same thumb rule as what we hear about the of about prophecy. One Thessalonians five. He talks about okay, you know, test all things, hold fast to what is good, right? So you're hearing a message, you test it, and see, you know, is it in line with scripture? Is it does it bear witness with scripture? Hold fast to what is good. Okay, what are the things that you're not holding fast to? Maybe the person's lifestyle, maybe the person's attitude to certain things. You reject. You don't hold. Yeah, so that is that is the thing. So, if you look at everybody, all preachers, all messengers, including ourselves personally, we are all works in progress, 
right we are we are moving from a place of maturity to an higher level of maturity right so that is the thing so that is all of us have some things that we, we that we can learn from each other that we need to develop and so that is there but if there is something at the core of our character if something that is wrong in the sense if i intentionally after knowing the truth i refuse to accept the truth and i continue to live in rebellion and i continue to you know minister and share the word of god then i need to be really really careful how and what i hear right so because the first thing is um is the person is the because everywhere we see that jesus himself says do and teach um and teach uh, you know when it comes to teaching when it comes to um appointing someone you know talks about commitment and ability you now commit these to faithful people who will be able to teach others also we see in first timothy second timothy um you know uh, titus and everywhere we see the qualif- uh, qualifications of a of a person appointed you know for ministry and we see that a lot is to do with character there is a certain percentage of ability right faithful who will be able to teach others there's one line you know which comes there so that means there is an ability to teach but then the whole lot refers to character so there is this emphasis you know so yeah so the thing is um for us personally when we want to be ministered to when we are receiving this is we can follow this you know um uh, we need to test and we need to receive it yeah 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 mm. yeah so the, so the thing is this yeah uh, true while um, finding fault with the speaker so again that's the thing you know like uh, if there's a fundamental character flaw which the person is refusing to address you know uh, over the years and uh, so then yeah so then it becomes a very uh, as a congregation oh i see okay mm, yeah yeah they are complaining and they are finding fault yeah so that's the thing you know so, that, so there are certain things there are see there are certain certain things that we can definitely overlook commit to god and say lord you know you work in that person's life change you know uh, that person uh, we can pray you know commit that to god you know when it comes to certain things but there are certain things which we need to be congregation also has to absolutely absolutely because many times we like the lord jesus said you know we refuse to consider the plank in our eye and we are looking at the speck in the other person's eye right so that's the thing but we need to be discerning so that's what the bible says like when we look look through first corinthians second corinthians second corinthians especially paul says you know you be careful because there are some who are ravenous wolves he says you know which means that here they are come to take something out of you not to add to your life they have come to you know kind of abuse and a lot of abuse happens like spiritual circles right um so we he's saying you be discerning and you cannot use the argument they are ordained by god because unfortunately in some of the places that's the thing hey, we can't touch the anointed whereas and nobody even questions they are not accountable to anyone and they do what they want destroying people's lives now that should not be so that's what i'm saying yeah okay that's all time <laughs> we have for today so we'll get into chapter 4 in our next class right okay thank you god bless bye bye thank you pastor